What's up guys, welcome to Visexualization. This is Nestor Adrian Sen. Today I'm going to show you how to reduce your model size by disabling auto daytime in Power BI Desktop. Before we get started, as always, if this is the first time you stop by this channel, please don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notifications on my new Power BI tutorials. So now, quick question, are you ready? Let's do this. For today's tutorial, I have four different points and this is gonna be a quick tutorial, okay? First point here, why Power BI automatically creates day tables? So what is the price of creating day tables in Power BI. The third point, I'm gonna show you the steps to disabling out of day time in Power BI Desktop. And finally guys, a case to walk you through the steps. So now let's move on to the first point. So here we have this question, right? Why Power BI automatically creates day tables? So here is the answer. It's just convenience for beginners who don't know how to create a calendar table and or manage hierarchies, for example. Remember here, when the data is loaded into the data model, Power BI automatically creates day tables to support calendar hierarchies for all columns in daytime data type. But remember here, all of us have been there, right? All of us have been beginners. This is very useful at the beginning. So now guys, let's move on to the next point. So now we have another question here. So what is the price of not disabling this feature within Power BI Desktop? Three really important points here. First one, if the auto daytime is enabled, Power BI Desktop will create a date table for every field in the model that has a date or daytime data type. This is something that we just mentioned, right? The second point here, Automatic day tables consume too much storage, which leads to severe performance issues. So that's one of the main reasons that we need to disable uh, this feature within Power BI Desktop. And remember here also the third point, it's common practice in data warehousing to use October 1st, 1900 for unknown dates in the past and December 31st, 99, 99 for no dates in the future. So now imagine how large a file could be if we don't disable this feature. Also, remember disabling the out of date feature removes all the automatically created date tables, which reduces the file size. So guys, really, really important concepts. Now let's move on to the next point. So now let me walk you through the steps real quick. If you have a file open, Power BI desktop file open, you go to file and then you hit options and settings and finally options. And then this new window pops up. And here we have two options. We have the global option and also we have the current file option. So everything happens right here, data log for both global and current file, data log here, data log here. If you guys can see here, and this is just for the screenshot that I have, we are selecting data log for global, and then there is an option called time intelligence, and here it is. We basically, we need to uncheck this feature right here, out of date time for new files. If we uncheck this, we are removing every single automatic date table within the model. I'm gonna walk you through this in the next slide. So now let's go over the case. It's quite straightforward. Disable the out of day time feature at the global and local levels in Power BI Desktop. And also here we have something really important. Before you disable this feature, use DAX Studio to visualize the hidden date tables. Critical, critical part here as well. So as always, let's go to Power BI Desktop. Okay, so here we are in Power BI Desktop. And remember, we already have two tables. We have a date table or calendar table. I already created this table. So this is the code, okay? If you're not familiar with calendar tables, I'm gonna share with you the link 
So you can take a look at it, okay? And this is the calendar table. And also we have the financial table. You might be familiar with this table. This is part of the data sets that Power BI provides. So here it is. And remember, this table has a column called date. This is a date type column, okay? Before we perform any changes here, let's use DAX Studio. DAX Studio is an external tool. It's right here. So I wanna hit right here, DAX Studio. So it's loading. So this is the DAX Studio window, and I already connected the Power BI Desktop report with DAX Studio. And here we also have another date table. See right here? So that's the hidden date table that I've been talking about. So now let's minimize this for a second, and let's start disabling this feature within Power BI Desktop. So before we disable this feature, let's take a look at the dates table right here. See right here? This dates table has already a hierarchy. This is year, quarter, month, and day, automatically. So please keep this in mind. And now let's go to file, options and settings here, options here, it's loading. Here it is. These are the two options that I just mentioned, right? We have the global option and we also have the current file option. And here we have data low. This is where everything happens. And let's just scroll down a little bit and here it is. We have the time intelligence option here and then we need to uncheck this option. If we do that, we're gonna disable this feature for the new files, for every single new file. For now, let's use just the current file option here, data low, and then let's disable this option just for this file, okay, for this report. So now let's hit okay and let's see what happens. Okay. As you guys can see here, this already changed no more hierarchies for the date column in the calendar table. See right here, we don't have more hierarchies. So now if you wanna enrich this calendar table, what you can do is use DAX to add new columns. How do we know if this is working? The same thing here, let's go to external tools and then let's use DAX Studio. We know that it's actually open, so let's hit that option again. Bingo. So now guys, as you can see, no more hidden tables. We are just seeing the calendar table and also the financials table. So that's how it works. All right, so let's minimize this. So what do you think? This is very, very helpful if you have multiple date columns for a specific table or in your model in general, right? Because you might have a lot of hidden date tables and your model is gonna be too, too large. This is a really, really nice tip, and I hope you find this helpful, my friends. So now let's go back to our presentation. All right, guys, that was it. I hope you found this helpful. If so, please give me a thumbs up, share with your friends, and of course, don't forget to subscribe if you don't wanna miss anything. Thank you, guys, and see you in my next tutorial.